turn to hymn number 89. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount are poured. There, where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Sin and despair, like the sea waves cool, threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold, point to the refuge, the mighty cross. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a cleansing tide, wider than snow you may be today. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that we pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sins and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary mountain outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was pleased. Go. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that is our sin and our guilt yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured there where the blood of the lamp was pleased grace grace God's grace grace that we pardon Three. 
praise freely bestowed on all who believe you that are longing to see his face when you this moment his grace receive grace Father in heaven, we thank you once again. We give glory and honor unto you. This is the first Bible study of the year that we are starting. And as usual, we have come to dine even at the table. And so, Lord, as we present ourselves before you, we ask that you speak to us, every one of us. Lord, we ask that your spirit we open our eyes into your words. Even if we are things we have had before, we pray that you give us fresh understanding that we be able at every point in time when the opportunity calls to be able to explain and explain unto those that have not had such experience. Spirit of God have absolute control and minister to us. Thank you because I know you have answered. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Shall we be seated? Like I said, this is the first uh, Bible study in this year. And as usual, I believe the Lord will speak to us individually and collectively. And so we are returning to the book of John, the Gospel according to John. We are in chapter 3 and we are studying chapter 3 verse 1 to 12. Under this title The Indispensable Experience Indispensable Experience when we say indispensable, we mean something you cannot do without. And it is an experience. So let's go to John chapter 3 from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto, unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, He said the man be born of water and of spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listed, 
and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence he cometh, and whither he goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we know, we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? Na oni pebi a o free Pharisee fo no mu e wo ho a ne din e de Nicodemus a o ye Judea fo peni bi ono e na oba Yesu nchen anajo na obesi no se Rabbi ye nim se wo free o Nyankopon nchen e na aba se o kyerekyere fo na obi intumi nyen senkyerene a wo ye ji se o Nyankopon e ka ne ho Yesu bua se ne se mereka a kyere ono kremu para se Wangu obi fufro a ori ntumi inhunu onyankopon ahindie no nikodemo se no se ebe yedan e na onipa a wanyini no obetumi awo no obetumi akone na yem bio na wawo no ana yesu bua se ne se mereka a kire ono kremu para se wanfri insio ene huhum anwu obi a ori ntumi ense ne onyankopon ahindie mu de wo fri ohonam mu no awo de o free ohonam mu awo no no eye ohonam na de o free honhom mu awo no no eye honhom e ma no enye o nwanwa se meka mechira wo se etwase wo wu fufro enframa eboko fa ku a epe na wati nenka na wonim fa ku a e free ene fa ku a erekro saara enso e na obi ara a wawo no honhom mu eno tie nikodemus se buase no se e be yedan e na ye num aye ho Yesu bua se no se wo ye Israel chirachire fo e na wonim ye no mereka a chira wo nokre mu para se de ye nim e na ye ka na de ye huno e na ye di hu adanse e nanso monnyi ye adanse e eno se maka mo se asem no asem e na monnyi inni a e be yeden e na se meka mo osoro ensem eno a mo beji edi Today, Amen. we come to this crucial and widely misunderstood and sometimes mocked. That is the topic being born again. This is a very controversial topic. Because somebody can be 100 years and still is confused about this matter being born again. It's not a matter of age. If you look at the person called Nicodemus, he came to Jesus in the night. The question is, why did he visit me the night? It was because he was confused and about said, this being born again of a thing. And he was a highly respected and regarded personality. He was thinking how people will feel if they see him coming to Jesus to ask Jesus about this matter that is confusing. So he went in the night to find out what this being born again is all about. So all the places you find out that people are confused. Somebody will tell you, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a born again type. So such individuals are confused. 
question is how can someone be a Christian but is not a born again type so by the grace of God we are going to look into it in details and even if you have known about it before if you have had the experience before this study will give you an opportunity to know all it's all about and be able to explain to somebody what it is all about so we are going to take it you know uh, step by step I don't know how long it will take us but by our outline I know we are not going to take it in less than three weeks so I pray you continue to come so that God will help us to look into this matter once and for all and even if you are not born again at the end of the day you will see the need to be born again if you are born again you will now have information as to how to explain it to somebody so let's begin from point number one an experience indispensable an experience indispensable experience you cannot neglect experience you cannot do without it's like food water and air there's no way you can survive without this you can't survive without food. You can't survive without air. You can't survive without water. You can't survive without some other things for some time. There's no way you can survive with this that I mentioned now. So our life is so much dependent on that. In John chapter 1, Johanne, chapter 3 rather, Johanne, verse 3, 5 and 7. Verse 3, 5 and 7. Verse 3, 5 and 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 5. Jesus answered Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 7, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Yes, you was no say, Merican Achra, Kuremu Para say, Wamu Obifu for a orin to me in Huno or Yanko Pine Indian. A numino, yes, you was say, yes, you was say, Merican Achra, no Kuremu Para a say. When free in Sioni Homo and who be our ring to me in Sani, O Yankopa in the Edom in Sono, and Mano and Yaw one once said, Make her, Machera will say, It shall sell a wolf for all. Let's look at what happened from verse one to two, one and two. You ready to see a war back on him, you know. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do this thing, these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And then Jesus said, answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, when you look at this scripture we have read now, something will be telling you that Jesus did not answer him directly because he was asking another question and Jesus was giving him another answer 
That tells you that Jesus knew why he came. Like I told you, he came in the night. He didn't come in the daytime. Probably he had been observing Jesus. He may have observing people that have come to Jesus' area. And something was telling him. This person is different. All the people that are following him, they are different. What is the cause of the difference in them? Why are they like why are they not doing like other people? Why are they different? But he was a teacher. He was expected to know. But he didn't know. So he went in the night. And then he asked Jesus, If you are not from heaven, you wouldn't have been doing this thing you are doing. And Jesus now told him why he is a different person. He said, You must be born again. And he said, Verily, verily. Truly, truly. You must be born again. If you are not born again, forget about living this kind of life we are living. Forget about being like us. The difference is that you must be born again. And the man was confused. How do you mean? Do you mean I should go and enter into my mother's womb the second time? I am old. How possible will it be? That tells you he was confused. That tells you that he didn't know what it means to be born again. And Jesus repeated again. Verily, verily, I say unto you. You must be born again. And that repetition is for emphasis. To make him to see the need. And that's why we say that it is indispensable. It is an indispensable experience. And it's unquestionable. Unquestionable in the sense that when you have it, you will know. When you experience it, you will know. There are things that will happen to you that will, know, that will make people know you have gotten this experience. Number one is indispensable. It is an experience. When you have this experience, so given the fact that the information on it came from none else than the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is God's word? Personified. What are we saying? Who made this truth? Who revealed this truth? Who is the person that is saying you must be born again? Who is the person that is saying it's is indispensable? We are referring to the Son of God. Who is God Himself? Who came from heaven? Our free heaven. Who is qualified to tell us about it? Who is qualified than Jesus? That makes it more serious. There are things that people will tell you you may not take them serious but some other person will say it you take that person serious why are you taking the person serious because of the personality that said it if you return home now and there is an announcement from the presidency that so and so thing will happen tomorrow you, even if you are mad you won't come out because of where the information is coming from so having seen Jesus the very son of God the word of God making such a statement you must take it seriously Let's see in John chapter 1 verse 1 
to confirm the person that is making the statement. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Jesus was not created. But Jesus is equal with the Father and the, and the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He was with the Father. And he had been with the Father from everlasting. Now look at verse number 14. Verse 14. And the word was made fresh, and he dwelt among us. And we behold his, his, his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when Paul was writing, when Apostle John was writing, look at what he said about Jesus. In 1 John chapter 4, John chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, Hereby know we the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Where ye, wherefore ye are, you, you have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. What am I trying to prove here? Now, Anybody that do not agree that Jesus Christ is God, even though he came in the flesh, that that person is not of God. In other words, God came in the flesh. God came in the flesh. Look at John chapter 1 verse 14. Verse 14 said, And the word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ took a human flesh and became a human being. The word was made flesh, and he became a human being. Yesu ebe ye hon nam obe fa e nipa e tibia e mu asam no ebe ye o nipa Now in Hebrew chapter 2 Hebrew form ma e tibia nu Hebrew chapter 2 Hebrew form ma e tibia nu From verse number 1 Yimba konu And he said God who at in sundry times and in diver manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets had in these last days spoken unto us by the Son, who he had appointed heir of the earth of all things, by whom also he made the world, who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, where he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty of God. Of her. Look at what this scripture is saying. That God that are born from time decided, I mean, was spoken to our fathers and the world in diverse ways through dreams, through, through prophecy, through his word, in various forms, decided that at these last days, that we now come in person as a human being 
to relate with human beings. That is why one of the apostles or one of the disciples said, Lord, show us the Father and we shall be satisfied. And Jesus said, I have been with you all this while, you have not known the Father. Now, he that have seen me have seen the Father, for I and the Father we are one. Yes, you as you once said, now many martyrs are bringing in a and a moon in Majay will be Biara where whom in a journal if you send me free a John chapter 14, verse 6. You honey woman, a tea do nine ye musia. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man coming to the Father is said by him, by by by. By, by me. Yes, you say, and say, many quiet and no, and no cry, and name quiet and no, be in my a journey change, said, oh, now, so. So, the point I am trying to prove here is that God Himself is the one that came to tell human beings that they must be born again. Into the air, Patrick, and say, in Yankupon and Cassan, a barber catcher, and Nippa, and say, I was here, yeah, with a frog. So if you had it from the mouth of somebody, you didn't take it serious. Now God is the person that is saying you must be born again. If you negate it, you negate it to the damnation of your soul. Now he made another statement. Jesus said, yes, you can. I am the way. Was I am the truth. I am life. What is the implication? The implication is this. If you are confused sir, what do you mean as to how to go to heaven, sir, if you are confused sir, what do you mean as the right way to heaven, if you are confused, sir, what, do you mean what you need to go to what you need to do to go to heaven, God Himself, who came down here on earth as a human being and said, no can't. don't be confused. I am the way. He didn't say I am a way. I am the way. I am the way. He didn't say I am a way. If he has said I am a way, it simply means there are many ways through which somebody can come. Like people will tell you that many ways will lead to Rome. It is not true. Some people will tell you that we are all calling God. That whichever God we are calling, that will be in heaven. The question is this. God himself knowing the implication in the person of Jesus said I am a way and he said I am the way he made it a definite statement he didn't leave any room to any person I am the way you are looking for the truth I am the truth I myself is the truth. Which means whatever he says is the final. Whatever he says is the final. You are looking for life? He said, I am life everlasting. I am the everlasting. The everlasting life. Everybody is praying for. I am that everlasting life. And nobody has challenged him. Nobody has died. And came back to life. Jesus said, I had the power to give my life and take it back. And Bible said, when he died, he rose again and with infallible proofs. And a number of people saw him as he went to heaven. Since that time till now, nobody, nobody had, nobody had died and came back. So why should you not believe him? Why should you not believe him? If such a personality is the one that is saying that 
being born again is indispensable. So we be ya we frono enya dia we say we be agro. Truly, truly, I say. And he said, no cry, no cry, make you have to take it seriously. So we say we frono eni breso. It means that if you are not born again, and he says, so we nya we fro. You cannot go to heaven. And he want to me go heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, in the days of his flesh, he spoke nothing but that which God gave him to say. According to the Father. Because he said, I and the Father we are one. Let's see in John chapter 7. Verse number 17. John 7, 17. If any man will do this, his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. So Obi Epeso or Yen a Pedia A Obe Hunu say in Chirachira no Efri or Yankupon and answer Efri me ara mitri mu and a makeam. If you will do his will, so we are not pedia. That if you obey his words, and it says, we are suti a man and some If you accept what he says, so we did the all can it too Then you will now prove to yourself that the word of God is true. What are we saying? If you will repent of your sins so with all your heart and confess your sins and ask God to forgive you, you will not experience yourself that this word is truth. There are, there are certain things that are better experience than to explain. No matter how somebody, no matter how somebody tries to explain to you being born again, it will just be happening in your imagination. By the, time, by the time you obey God and accept that you are a sinner and confess your sins and ask God to have mercy on you, then you are invite Jesus into your heart something will happen there will, be a, there will be the influence of the power of God in your life the spirit of God will give birth to you you will become regenerated and the moment you are regenerated everything will begin to change you will see it it's not like they say, they say, they say. You will experience this yourself. So that is the reason why it is difficult to explain to somebody what being born again is all about. A said the Spirit of God enters the person. And the person drops sin. And by faith accepts Jesus as God and Savior. The power to me, that raised Jesus from the dead. The power of God. We enter into the individual. You see the person singing a new song. By the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now in uh, uh, John chapter 8. Verse 26 and 28. John chapter 8. Let's see verse 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak, speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my father had taught me, I speak these things. Simply saying, when you would have obeyed, when you would have done what God expects you to do, you will prove the word of God to be truth. It will no longer be somebody told you, but you prove the word of God to be truth. There are all true and they say, said it, young people, I can say, when you say, you in John chapter 12, verse 4950, For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father who sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that the commandment 
And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. If we say, Media, and yea, me and I may share me who say, make a sigh, me share me who make a sigh, now a ja, I or summa meno, and I or share me, dear Minka, any said ye, Minkasa, me, na minim sir, na said ye no, a ye da and qua, ain't ye, dear Mekano, said ye a jano, a car, a chira meno, Sarah, and a Mika. So we have established the person that made this statement. That the person that made this statement is God. And if he is God, then he showed the seriousness of the matter. And anybody that negates it, we negate it to the detriment of his soul. So you won't be born again. How do you get born again? You have to say what God said concerning you. The word of God, God said, All have seen and come short of the glory of God. All became sinners. In Adam, through one man's sin, death entered into the world. And for that, all have sinned. Before I proceed, let me just explain a little what happened. The sea probably will help you. When God molded uh, a mud and bleeded into the nostril, he became a living soul. Having spirit, soul, and body. When God gave them commandment and said, The very day you disobey me, you will die. Disobey me by eating this fruit of death. And something happened. Man willfully disobeyed God. By how? Saying. Look at what the Bible said. In 1 Timothy. Chapter 2. So that you have understanding. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Timothy chapter 2. Verse number 14. And Adam was not deceived, but woman being deceived was in transgression. Look up here. Adam was not deceived. What's the implication? He knew what he did. The woman was deceived. But Adam was not deceived. Adam knew what God said. Adam was very conscious. Adam knew what God said. He decided to do his will. He decided to disobey God. And he has to pay for it. Adam was not deceived. He knew what he did. And he disobeyed God. The question now is, will God remain God by keeping his word and by saying, well, it doesn't matter, let me go forget about it. Then there's no more God. For let all men be liars and God remain the truth. So when he disobeyed God, then what God said happened to him. He now died. He, he, had, he had never seen death before. He didn't know how death will look like. He didn't know that death would be in three forms. The first one is that he will be separated from God. He will no longer have fellowship with God. That is the fourth death. When somebody is dead, he's motionless. He can't hear you. He can't start with you. He won't hear your voice. Even if you throw it up, down, 
He's motionless because he's dead. So when you hear that Adam died, it means that he was cut off from God. He, he was not having any interaction with God. Something blocked him from God. No more connection. No more relationship. And when God came down in the garden, I said, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Began to give excuse. No, a man, no, he, ca he can't perceive God again. He, no, he can't see can God again. No, he no, can't no, interact with God no, again. No, because, because he's already no, dead. No, no, no. That's an aspect of death. No, no, no. Another aspect of death is that Adam died physically because God said you are of dust and you return back to dust so when he sinned he lived for a long years in fact he lived 963 years eventually he gave up for dust that art dust you are going back to now, but, sign up or not you. but many people get bothered more about dropping the flesh. They, they do not consider the, the first death and the last death. Everybody will go through the, 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 the second death, which is putting up this your body. It's, it is dust, it will go back to dust. That is second death. Now the third death is final separation. Man was created to be with God forever. And so when he sinned, that life of God was withdrawn. And when that life of God is withdrawn, it means you are separated. So if nothing is done, while you are still alive, you didn't repent, you didn't repent and come back to God, at the point of death, you are finally separated from God. But if you repent, and I got to forgive you, and accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. Then that life that Adam lost will be restored back to you. So you will die, but your life is preserved. Because death is not the end. It's not the end. You will die. Quite all right. But your spirit will be preserved. And on the last day, you are going to resurrect. You will not live with God forever. Because the purpose of God cannot be defeated. So you can understand the implication of being born again. Another implication is this. This you are fresh and your blood is not fashioned to endure eternity. Are you following me? This your flesh and your blood cannot endure eternity. If they put this your body now under a certain temperature, it will melt to dust. But a glorified body will never die. A glorified body, a body that has resurrected, a body we never die. They don't, bury, they don't bury body in heaven. So there has to be a transformation. There has to be a change. So that is why Jesus said, except a man is born again, he cannot see and he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That tells you that it's a necessity. If you be there, your body has to be changed. It has to be born again to be able to have a body that will endure eternity. The same thing is applicable to anybody that is not born again. If we take another body that, in, that will be able to endure hell, hell is not a place Fire will just burn you and burn you off, annihilate you. That's the word they use. But it is a place 
that is also endured or fashioned to endure eternity. So it's either, it is either you are in eternity with God or you are in eternity with Satan. I hope you can begin to see why it is necessary. I hope you can begin to see why it is necessary. That you are born again. So that you will be given a body that will be able to endure heaven. We are just trying to lay a foundation for you. Now let's go back again to this person, if our Lord Jesus Christ, that came to tell us about being born again. The Bible made us to know that he is Lord himself. In Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah Let's look at verse number 6. When we are equipped with this information, then you will not know why you must seek to be born again. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah For unto us, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, wa wu ako kwa amaye wa maye obabe ni na na hindi ebeda ne metri eso na wa friend ni din ese ofutu fuwa wanweni onyango pontu fuwa daja asumjiye hine. Now, the preeminence, the importance of this experience. It's also brought out by the following facts which we are going to explain to you. One, Nicodemus was not only a Jew, but a member of Supreme Jewish Council. Nicodemus, the other kind of said, Nicodemus, no one yet. In other words, the person that Jesus told us was not just a common man. He was also a labor. To be a labor is to be a religious leader or a religious teacher. And apart from that, he was also a, 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 a spiritual leader. So it is expected that he should know. That's why Jesus said, Are you a teacher? And you know all these things. So it's not a matter of being a teacher. It's not a matter of being a highly religious person. It's not a matter of commanding authority. But it's an inexplicable experience. It's also inexplainable. And that is why such people in high authority they don't understand it. And this Nicodemus was also convinced of God's existence. Because he was a teacher of the Jews. And he believed that God sent Jesus. Look at John chapter chapter 1, I mean chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. John chapter 3, 1 to 2. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Labai, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these things, these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Now, when you be a free Pharisee, for I know a more ever who are the dean, I didn't call them our year you then you that four penny be or no, and I'll buy yes, soon chain and I do no best say no, sir, Rabbi, yen him, sir, 
wo fri o nyankopon chen e na aba se o chirechire fo na obi ntumi nyen se nchirani a wo ye gi se o nyankopon ka ne so he was a religious man e nti no ye nyame sumni he was a teacher no ye chirechire fo he was a highly placed person no ye ni pa wo di brekasi mu but he had never had that experience na so no nya sa su ehuni na to ordinary natural mind it would appear that nicodemus was already on his way to heaven that is why some people are confused. So are you trying to say that all the big, big, big people in Orthodox churches that, in fact, they are the people that are already, already on their way to heaven? That is where this man found himself. But he was sincere. And he privately went to Jesus. I, 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 I can tell you when we started, there were some religious people that were secretly and privately attending our meetings. Because they wouldn't want anybody to know that they attended the fellowship. So it's not a matter of your position in the society. You must be born again. So the fact is that such religious man needed to be born again. Such religious person. He needs to be born again. Some of us we have our parents, and yeah. then somehow you are thinking, does it apply to them? No matter the, the position of your father, your mother, your uncle in the society. If he's not born again, so, he's not born again. You know, sometimes we see a very big person die in the society, and then somebody will say, ah, these are the ones that have gone to heaven already. So if you yourself you are not born again and you have not had the experience, you will be saying, How can such a person? In fact, I was in a bank some time ago, many, many years ago, more than 30 years ago, and a bank manager was saying to my hearing that God is so good. How can he take all these people to hell? By then I become born again. I was, was seeing the ignorance of this person. That, that God is too good. How, how can he allow these people to go to hell? I saw where this person was standing. So if you are born again, if you know the implication, whether the person is your chief, whether the person is your elder brother, whether the person is your mother or your father, if the person is not born again, he's not born again. And the, the implication is that the person will not see the kingdom of God. And if you allow these truths to register in your heart, you begin to seek a way of ministering to such people before they pass on. Because God will not mind you are thinking. If you don't accept the word of God, whose word are you going to accept? So the fact that Nicodemus came to Jesus, he showed the preeminence of the experience. The importance of the experience. The fact that Nicodemus came, he shows how important this experience is. And so, this reminds us of the person of Cornelius. Cornelius and so he was who apparently was more pious than Nicodemus, yet needed to be born again. No, what would the person in Cornelius? Nanso, you can't compare Cornelius and Nicodemus. 
Why? Cornelius was a philanthropist. Cornelius He had built a number of more, uh, uh, synagogue for God. He had done so many things for God. Do you know how Bible describes him? He said that his gifts became a monument and stood before God. And was saying, God, remember Cornelius. God, remember Cornelius. But Cornelius was not born again. And God cannot change his word. God cannot change his principle. What did he do? God now sent an angel unto Peter and sent somebody unto Cornelius and made arrangements so that Cornelius can be visited. And Cornelius was visited. And Cornelius heard about Jesus and surrendered his life and became born again. Why did God not make do with his philanthropies? Why did God not consider him? Why did God not say it's not important? So you can see how important this thing has been. I want to read you a scripture in As of Apostle chapter 10. As of Apostle, As formal, chapter 10, etidu. verse number 1 to 5. Yimu As chapter 10, formal, that is etidu. the story of Cornelius. E there Cornelius. was a certain man in, in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which gave much arms to the people and pray to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour or the day of an angel of God <clears throat> coming to him, saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call one Simon, whose name is Peter. He lodged there, he will come to you, he will minister to you. Then Peter was communicated. At the end of the day, Cornelius had the word and became born again. In this hour, and a see your question. Peter, no bar, Cornelius, who a becassa children, no effort of from, and now on any fee, you know, or me, there was another big man, or Nipakas, you've been so a governor, or yeah, or man penny, and Paul, Paul was preaching to him, and Paul Cassach, and somebody came to prevent that person from hearing the gospel. No, be a bazo, so be seen upon a coin, so and Paul turned to the man. And say, you child of the devil. You want to prevent the governor from hearing the word of God. Right now, you are going to be blind. And a man became blind. And they took him by hand. And took him home. When the governor saw it, he gave his life to Christ. First us. Another big man. And Paul came to preach to him. And Paul reasoned from the scriptures and told him everything about Jesus. You know what he said? Paul, much learning has made you mad. Another person. Paul spoke to him. You know what he said? You have nearly persuaded me to be a Christian. I will hear you some other time. So, there have been so many people in the history because God did not change his position. You must be born again. That is the position of God. No matter wherever you are in the society, you want to be born again. And if you go around, 
and see people that are giving their life to Christ. You will see, you will see even presidents. You will see prominent people. And they are surrendering unto God. Then, who are you to compare with all these big, big people? nobody is small in the eyes of God but all men are not equal so if all these people that are in authority are still finding it necessary to give their life to Christ and become born again you have no excuse you have no excuse another person a minister of finance. Minister of finance. He had gone to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. From Ethiopia. Every Ethiopia. If you know the distance. From Ethiopia to Israel. It's about, about three hours flight. It's about three hours flight. And if you calculate three hours flight, you find that on the average, such a plane will go about 700 to 800 miles per hour. So the distance cannot be more less than 2,400 miles. That's the distance that this man traveled. I went to Jerusalem. Because they believe that it's Jerusalem you see God. And they went there. And they did all the ceremonies. All the rituals. All the sacrifices. They did not, didn't find God. And God saw that this man was looking for him but he had not known the true God so as he was going home the spirit of God said to, 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 to Philip join this chariot join this chariot and Philip came by and then followed the man you can see how God connects he saw the man reading the scripture then he said to the man do you understand what you are reading? The man said, how will I know? He said, somebody explain to me. And behold, he was reading Isaiah chapter 53. Who is Isaiah chapter 53 talking about? He's talking about Jesus and the crucifixion of Jesus. And he began from there and ministered unto him Jesus. And the man said, What stops me from being baptized? They came down and went to the water and then Philip baptized him. Immediately Philip baptized him. The Holy Spirit took that man away Philip away from that scene and drop you in another place which is about 80 miles away from there and then the man went to rejoicing these are the people that brought Christianity to Africa these are the people from Ethiopia these are the people that taught people about the word of God, I mean about Christ. You can, you can read it in Matthew chapter, I mean Acts of Apostle chapter 8 from the 26 to 40. Acts of Apostle chapter 8 from the 26 to 40. Acts of Apostle chapter 8 from the 26 to 40. There you will find the story that I've told you now. A minister of finance. He went to look for God. But he was looking for God in the wrong place. Until Philip came and explained Jesus to him. And he came again. How can you not see that this thing is very important? Now, this is inescapable and uh, I mean experience that you must have. So we are just going through preliminaries of this study. Now, the indisp indispensability of this experience can be likened to the air, water, food, to human life. Therefore, 
and whatsoever it, one has that may appear good, if you don't have this experience, you have not started. And it's a dibiara a obi e wune se e papa se wunya se su e wunu we ya na ni e wun ko babya. If you know how important food is to you, se wuni se de eduanu wunya e ma wono. How important air is to you, se de mframa wunya ma wono. If you know how important these things are to you, so who who said they were more who he am aware? The same place is this experience playing in your life. So, ena so adi we inso aye e we abrabo. So whether you are a teacher in the church, it is a we are chere chere for e we are sorry mo. Whether you are singing in the choir, so we to you mo. Whether you are living a religious life, so we didn't go for any more. Whether you are ordained, and I say you are sure, baby. Whether you are a professor, and I say we are conscious for. Or whatever you are professing, and I baby be ara a we are. Or wherever you are belonging, and I say you may be a woman in a pure society. A wo baby a mo. Whether you are giving offering, so we ma. You are coming to fellowship regularly. A masua for the and I say we are fasting. We are conscious. You are praying. We bomb pie. You are singing. We to you singing Christian songs. We to a Christian for. Peace among men. Now we need. If you are not born again, all these things are useless. We mu ni na mfaso biye niso. All these things are useless. Eni ma we ni na mfaso biye niso. Think about that. Yen juni we. And that's where we are start stopping tonight. Eh wa? Eni edi besi anaju. You must be born again. Eh wa so ya ufro. You can't neglect it. If you neglect it, it will be to the detriment of your soul. And I have told you briefly why it becomes necessary. If you should, if you should ask me, so who be sana? I say in my mind. If it were possible, God will admit everybody in heaven. But if He admits you in heaven, nanso. And you don't have this body that will endure in eternity. How will you manage? Assuming there is a permission. I said, let everybody that wants to go to heaven, let him come to heaven. So the person will call heaven, no one call. But there is no operation in you to change you from mortal to immortal. And I said, this is a B A N C O. The problem is that when you became born again. So be free when I'm walking home. At the point of resolution, resolution, I will fufra. Your body becomes immortal. That is the main issue. And when it becomes immortal body, then you can be, you can be with God forever and ever. These are body must decay. This body must decay. You can't escape it. So you should be looking forward to eternity. Where you be given a body that will not decay. And with this body, you can now be with God forever and ever. All the trouble we are taking in life as Christians, that is bottom line. All, all the mission work. All the money spending for mission. All the trouble people are taking in mission. It is to rescue you from eternal damnation. All the people that have died in the course of going for God. It is to rescue you from eternal damnation. And it is to rescue you from eternal But if you refuse, then you cross this life. Then you cannot, you cannot understand that God is serious. So, if you are not saved, what will you do? Then you be. God said you are a sinner. Not because you committed sin, but because you have a nature of sin. God is not sending people here because they committed sin. But God is sending them to hell because they refuse a solution to sin. God knew that we are born in sin and we have Adamic nature and we continue to sin because we have that nature. But when you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, sin will put a stop. 
Yankopon Nakasu would him say free at the moon and a bay in Tia Bonifo, Nansu Senipano, Eji Yesu, and also one year Yesu, and no other. You receive a power that you never had before. Would ye Yesu to my no and Albania to me? I wouldn't ya pain. He said, If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, he will quicken your mortal body. Or since a whom I yanni Yesu free, I will form no ever mumua, a bell Kenya munipediano. And he that is born again does not make practice of sin. Nadia or ye, I will frono or ye bonny. So the moment you receive the spirit of Christ, it is a winner Christian, a whom now. And that is if you are willing. And no answer so open. If you are living to drop sin, but if you are somebody that is that that loves sin, there is no way there is no way you are eating poison and you want to live. There is no rejection of sin in your mind. God will not save you by force. He can go against your will. You are the person that will decide. And then change your mind. Repentance is change of mind. You change your mind against sin. And no, who best is what you say? It's enough. You change your mind towards Christ. Say, I cannot continue again. I will follow God. I will serve God. And then the scripture said, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, deny every ungodliness and worldly lusts. We will live soberly and righteously in this present world. If you are willing. He that confesses his sin shall have mercy. He that the greatest sin he shall not have mercy. And I said, the one can born in one So the ball is in your court. You can choose life. You can choose death. Rise up and let us pray. Make up your mind. You must be born again. And we have explained the meaning to you. You can decide. And say, Lord, I will follow you. And you confess your sins. And make up your mind. Not to return back to sin. A Christian is not a sinner. And a sinner is not a Christian. You make up your mind. And then the grace of God will help you. If you are looking at this life, if you are eyes is on this life. Then you are not wise. You are not wise. How many people have you seen that are live forever? If you go to your family, you see many people that have died. And if time, if time tarries, all of us here, we, all of us here, we go one by one. So why are you bothered about physical life? You are not bothered about the real life. You are not bothered about having the spirit of God so that we can live with God. Let us pray now. You talk to God. Make up your mind and decide and invite Jesus into your heart so that you can escape her. This is time to pray and I want to, I want to hear you pray. I want to hear you talk to God. If you are born again, then pray for those that are not born again. Pray that their eyes be opened. Pray that this truth will be, will be open unto them. If you have a brother, you have a sister, you have somebody of importance, find a way to pass this truth. Because God is serious. The moment somebody passes this life, without this experience, just in case it's closed.